Welcome to Gallery Bites. We are currently in Gallery 308. Um, my name is Lorena Placencia, and I am an edu education and community associate. I'm still getting used to that title. <laughs> <laughs> and my name is Crystal Ruiz, and I'm an educator for our school and teacher programs here at the museum. And I also coordinate our student and community exhibition space. As Crystal well. does a little bit of everything. Yes. <laughs> And hello everybody, um, I'm Houghton Kinsman. I'm the Adult Education Coordinator here at the Crocker. You can't see me right now because I'm off screen, but I'll keyboard. be in the chat. Um, <laughs> yeah, Crystal and Lorena have a fantastic conversation planned for you all. Um, I'm standing in for Mallory Marsh, Associate Director of Education. So Mallory, if you're watching this out there, shout out, we miss you. <laughs> all right. Shall we get started? Yeah, let's all right. do this. <laughs> so, um, we are going to be looking at a piece today um, by artist Narciso Martinez. And um, before we get started, Crystal's gonna lead in with a little bit of an acti with an activity so that we can kind of just explore this piece together. Yeah. So we're gonna take a few moments to just do a slow looking activity. And so what I want everyone to do is kind of take a deep breath, let everything go. And we're just gonna take maybe about a minute to fully just look at the piece. I suggest you start at the very top of the painting and then you move your eye towards the very middle all the way to the very bottom of the painting. And then as you are looking at the piece, I just want you to start thinking about what story do you think is trying to be um, conveyed in this piece? Um, how does it make you feel? as well as is there anything that really catches your eye. So we're gonna start this um, slow looking. It's gonna be silent for a few moments and that's okay. It's just really an opportunity for you to reflect and really pay close attention to the artwork. All right. So as we mentioned earlier, this piece is by Narciso Martinez, and the title of the piece is Sunday Morning Chews, um, Domingo por la Mañana. Um, and something that Crystal and I should maybe mention is we're going to be using some Spanish throughout the program, but don't worry, everything that we say in Spanish will also be translated to yeah, English. Definitely. Um, and a little bit of background information about this artist. He was originally born in Oaxaca, Mexico, and he immigrated to the United States when he was around 2021. Um, and he was really, he started working in the fields and was really moved by that experience and kind of used that experience as inspiration for a lot of the art that he created. I'm gonna pass it on to Crystal. Yeah. And he also went to school in Long Beach. So in 2012, he got his bachelor's degrees in fine arts. And then he stayed at Long Beach and continued to create and went for his master's, which he received in 2018. So he really went through the entire process of getting a fine arts degree and has been since practicing um, just creating. And so um, why we chose this piece. Now, um, me and Lorena, we both have a Hispanic background. So we both use a lot of Spanish in our ho household. And we really just wanted to pick a piece we can kind of relate to. Um, specifically the stories that Narciso is sharing with us is they're just so vibrant, so you know, very empowering. So we decided let's go with the piece we know we can have a conversation about. And so um, a few things we're gonna be talking about is just 
really the imagery in the work as well as why he chooses to tell these type of stories and we're also just going to just take the time to really break it down and share some really fun information with all of you today. And we're and at any time you're welcome to, you know, ask questions in the chat. We'll be kind of reviewing that as we go along. And then um, if you just we, we're going to definitely be talking in Spanish at some point, but we will definitely translate throughout. So definitely. Yeah. I think we were really excited, Crystal and I, as she mentioned, walked through this gallery and immediately were drawn to this piece um, because we do feel like it is a piece that just like tells a story like so fully. Um, yes. And we both connected with it. Like Crystal said, there was definitely some cultural components um, like for example, the church, <laughs> that was something that was like huge for us yeah. um, and our experiences, so. Yeah, definitely, so we'll take a moment now and we'll really just kind of break down what we see in the piece. So if you wanna take a moment, maybe list a few things you're noticing in the artwork, like what do you see maybe in the background, the very back of the painting, and like I mentioned, when we move towards the middle of the piece, what do you see there in the middle ground, and also in the foreground what's right in front of us so right away I know when we walked into this space the first thing we really saw was the woman kneeling so that's what really drew us into this piece and so we see here there's a woman clothed with like I would say like really warm clothing yes. a lot of layers a lot of protective sure. layers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and she's kneeling on the ground right and she's doing something this is called like in a moment so you can see her body's turned she's right in front of this box and she's packaging like she's putting things inside and just looking at all the different layers of clothes we right away said oh wow like i wonder what kind of weather it is for her to be wearing so many layers of clothes is it winter time uh, is it summer and that's when we had this like fun conversation of well we can relate where it's like we have family members who, you know, used to work in the fields um, and many of them would say, well, you always dress like this, you know, you always dress in this clothing to protect you because the sun is so hot, right? And you don't want to get extreme sunburns. So they're always clothed like this. And especially during the winter, they have to wear a lot of layers. And so that was one big thing we noticed um, in this piece. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And she, uh, something else that we talked a lot about is we noticed like this woman who is on her knees, which is like a very reverent position in front of this church. Um, and we talked a lot about like the significance of like Sunday mornings and Sunday mornings in like Latino households, like Crystal, Sunday mornings, what were your Sunday mornings like? Oh my like? goodness. I know the first thing in the morning my mom would say, okay, levantate, we got to get ready, <laughs> put your um, Sunday outfit on and we're going to church at nine in the morning. And it was always like an early thing for us and we would probably get up and be so like exhausted, but it was really just because Sundays was in a, like you said, in, in a Latino home it's a big tradition like you wake up you get ready you go to church and after mm -hmm. you might go somewhere to go eat and it's just really a day to just like reflect and you know uh, do an offering and just say thank you for the week and it was just a nice way to start the next week it was just a huge tradition that we would do and so um, we definitely were just having that conversation about what it was like to be you know very young and have to go to church and yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like what Sundays meant to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, definitely. Same with in my household. We would go to mass at 10 a.m. So we got to sleep in a little longer <laughs> and then um, go. And it was like a day for family, like yeah. spending yeah. time with our grandparents, grandmas. Yeah. Um, so. And so when we think about that, when we're looking at this piece is Narciso's trying to tell you a story of what it's like to just be like an immigrant, right? Someone who came from a different country and has to find work. And one big thing for immigrants is like, they're the main providers of our food source. Essential you know? workers. They're essential workers. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones who kind of pick the fruits and the vegetables and they package it in, you know, these produce boxes and then it gets shipped off. And so thinking about that, it's like, well, his message to, you know, the community itself is just like, you have someone who's not at church, is working on a Sunday, and maybe that offering is the fact that she's working to 
provide for us, you yes, know, provide for definitely. the entire world. I love world. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She has like her own kind of offering. And something I don't know if you all noticed when you were looking at the slow piece, but a word that pops up often on this box is alt alter. And that was something that we talked a lot about. Mm -hmm. um, you can look closely and you see it in the asparagus. Um, and we talked about like the meaning of the word altar on this piece, right? Where it is a woman kneeling and giving a like offering to, um, like to a community. Yes, know, exactly. Like mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was like also something that we thought was really mm -hmm. important, something that drew us to the piece. Yeah, and Definitely. I think we both relate to where we're like, the first thing we said was, oh, altar, yeah. which <laughs> translates into altar. And we're like, oh, but we read it in Spanish yeah. rather, rather than in English. So it was really just a, like, a moment that just brought us into this piece for sure. And what I love too is Narciso wants it to be very intentional right he leaves that uncovered he doesn't want to actually cover all the words throughout it's it's almost like a reminder right that this is you know his goal is to offer definitely you know, this visual of like an altar almost and we'll show you a little bit about his process um we found a really wonderful video thank you long beach post for allowing us to share mm -hmm. um but his process is very very intentional he um from the materials he uses to the mediums he chooses um he's a very very intentional yeah and so after the video, we'll talk a little bit more about his process and really narrow it down to the materials and break it down as we visually see the piece. So we're gonna switch over and just watch this really short clip. My motivation for representing farm workers is really to shine a light to the plight of farm workers. I feel like my experience uh, working in the fields for many years led me to a conclusion that it's really not fair the way they live, um, as opposed to how the ranch owners live. My name is Narciso Martinez and I'm an artist. Right now I'm really into charcoal. I feel like charcoal um, aligns with the subject matter since it's very powdery, very dirty in a way. And, um, and I like to incorporate ink on it and uh, wash, especially white wash. And, um, and for support I use boxes, produce boxes. During undergrad, when I was in the fields, I was not really interested in the life of farmers because I was interested in making money for school. Because I was there, I was painting a lot of landscapes and trees and uh, flowers and stuff like that. But um, after I went to graduate pro program, I became more interested in the actual lives of the farm workers and so I would go to their places where they live and I would uh, share stories with them and talk to them. Because when I was in undergrad, I wouldn't talk to them, I would just stick with my group and just go from one orchard to another. But this time I would just actually go and at lunchtime I would just join a group, a different group every time. And, and so, um, you know, and I managed to go to, uh, to some of the uh, houses where the ranch owners lived and, you know, it's just like, I was like, how is this fair? You know, like all these people live in these trailers, very, um, I don't know, unsanitary, unsafe. And of course, where the ranch owners live, it's like they have all these um, two, three story houses in the middle of the orchards, and uh, they have all these nice cars parked outside. I mean, it's just like, I thought I was, this is crazy. I wanna, I wanna show this in my art, but uh, of course, it was a struggle. And when I started doing the drawings on the, on the, on the produce cover boxes, I think that kind of evolved to be more about the farm workers versus the agri agricultural industry because I feel like everything is connected. Mm -hmm. 
My name is Narciso Martinez and I'm an artist. And so feel free in the chat to tell us what was your favorite part of that video, what really was exciting for you. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to go into talking about the material itself. We had a nice comment in uh, the chat and they were asking about the surface itself, right? Like, let's talk about a little bit of just the surface. And originally when you come to a museum, a lot of the paintings are done on a canvas. And this is a little bit more different uh, because Narciso is being very intentional again. Usually mm -hmm. he says, like, he takes time to really um, look at his subject, which is the people, um, especially immigrants. He likes to really portray them as his subject. But then he goes into really talking about the boxes, right? The boxes is what they work in. The, yeah. the produce and also like fun fact he is the one who goes to grocery stores to collect these discarded boxes so I mm -hmm. think that in itself like reusing um, being really resourceful also yes. part of like the reason this painting is so beautiful yeah sorry continue no, that's good. <laughs> Crystal, Perfect. Lorena I'm glad you brought that up because Amanda McFadden um, has a really interesting comment in the chat it seems to be painted on a box like the one that is actually in the painting. Very yeah. good. Excellent. Yes. That's a great observation because it is, right? It's the same company um, and very intentional, right? He's placing it there for us to see it. So mm -hmm. he's trying to really use that same um, material. And I think Lynn and I had a really good conversation about him really uh, trying to use some brush strokes throughout with um, ink materials. Mm -hmm. And then he uses like pencil as well as charcoal, um, charcoal and white, wash, white yeah. wash, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like white, uh, his white charcoal pencil is what he starts with. You know, he draws his subject. And what I loved about the video is you can see he's visually looking at that person in his phone or in a picture. Mm -hmm. And he wants to make sure all the details are there from that person he's portraying. And I love that because he starts off with that sketching process and then he goes in and adds all those um, layers of ink throughout and so and something else that I really thought like just goes back to his intentionality as an artist um, he was talking about the mediums he uses and how he uses charcoal intentionally because it's a really messy medium and he felt like it best depicted like this type of work like yeah. messy um, difficult yeah. to use not like super controllable yeah the um, harsh conditions yeah. mm -hmm. of being a, you know someone who's out there in the dirt yes or just like in that environment yeah and so he also uses a word where it's like he wants a very somber quality because he wants you to understand that that experience he had as a worker wasn't easy it was not easy at all and then like the boxes is just the second layer, right? That's the next part. So it really just brings it all home. Mm -hmm. right? His intentions are there. And lastly, kind of talking about materials used or materials not used, um, Crystal and I, you know, notice there, there's no frame on this photo. So like, how does that change the viewer? Um, how does that change the context of this piece or the viewer's experience? Yeah, yeah. Because I know it does for me a lot, Yeah. right? Like it's like, wow. You know, it doesn't have to be fancy. <laughs> it can yeah. just be its, its own thing. And um, I think in that video, one big part mm -hmm. I liked is just the scale of his art. Like yeah. he uses, you know, for this one, he's using maybe just one box. But in mm -hmm. that video, you got to see him using multiple boxes and layering them and doing these really huge pieces. And so if you get a chance to just research him, his work itself is so powerful. And there's just so many different ways he you know, captures his, his subject. And I think maybe we can end with this question that Crystal and I are always having, but especially around this piece, like what is the value of creating art that will reflects your identity or your cultures? Um, That's very what, what do you think, Crystal? As being an amazing artist, <laughs> find her art Thank page you. Thank online. You. Um, Everyone has a different approach to it, right? Yeah. Everyone can be very unique. It just kind of depends on your background, where you come from. And maybe you might be as intentional like Narciso. He's very about like uh, reflecting the people and um, mm -hmm. just showing like their reality. And I think with me, it's like I might have a different approach where 
I might try to explain, I don't know, like <laughs> who I am in a painting and it might just be all over the place, right? <laughs> and so I just think like that's a very like good question to ask and yes. for your, you know, the viewers at home, maybe that's something you can take time to just really ponder on and, you know, take more time to really look at this piece because there's so much to talk about. Yeah, so definitely. Much to talk about. And if uh, any of our viewers are looking to come and um, see this piece in person, yes. um, where will they find it? We mm -hmm. are in Gallery 308, third floor of the newer building. Um, and yeah, come check this piece out in person because it's wonderful and seeing it via camera does not do it justice. Not at all. So yeah. Thank right. you so much for joining us today, and we hope you have a great rest of your Tuesday. Awesome. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you, Lorena. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Don't forget to join us again next time. Take care. Have a great afternoon.
Hi, welcome to Gallery Bites. My name is Lorena Plasencia and I am an education and community associate in the Crocker Art Museum's education department. And we are currently in Gallery 308. All right, and my name is Crystal Ruiz and I'm an educator for the school and teacher programs here at the museum and I'm also a coordinator for the student and community exhibition space here. And hello everybody, I'm Houghton Kinsman. I'm the adult education coordinator at the Crocker. You can't see me right now because I'm behind the camera, but I'll be active in the chat. So if you have any questions for Crystal and Lorena, let me know. I'm standing in for Mallory Marsh, Associate Director of Education. So Mallory, if you're watching the second installment, <laughs> we miss you and I promise you, I'll do you proud. Awesome, thank you. Right. So yeah, let's let's get into it. Yeah. <laughs> and so one thing before we start really oh, getting yes. into the artwork, uh, Lorena and I might say a few words that are in Spanish and we will translate them throughout the whole conversation. And that's pretty much what we're doing is we're going to have a really deep conversation about this piece. Um, we really want to hear from the crowd out there. So please make sure to use the chat and we'll take breaks to really um, answer any questions you might have. And um, yeah, we're going to jump right in. All right. So we're going to take a few moments to first just really look at the piece. Okay. And it's going to be a little silent, but what we're going to do is a slow looking activity. I want you to get started and just take a deep breath, let everything go and really just sink into this artwork. Uh, we're going to start at the very top of the painting and move our eyes down towards the very middle and then stop at the very bottom. And while you're looking at this piece, I want you to think about, well, what kind of story do you think is um, being conveyed here? And maybe start really noticing the materials, the imagery, and then how does it make you feel? So it's going to be a little silent for the next few seconds and let's get started. Let's do our slow looking. So the piece that we are discussing today is called Sunday Morning 2 by Narciso Martinez. So Domingo por la Mañana. Um, and a little bit about this artist is Martinez was born in Oaxaca, Mexico. Um, and he immigrated to the United States when he was around 20, 21 years old. And he spent a lot of his first couple years working in the fields. Um, and so this experience really inspired his art. Um, it was this experience along with some influence by the Mexican muralist that really influenced um, his like point of view, his perspective as an artist. And around 2012 is when he got his bachelor's degree in fine arts in Long Beach. And um, he stayed there and continues to work in that area. Um, and in 2018, he got his master's as well in fine arts. So it's really cool to see how he really just progressed um, in his field uh, as well as just like stayed in Long Beach. So why did we pick this piece? <laughs> So Crystal and I, we were told we would get to do a Gallery Bites together and we were thinking about the pieces that we wanted to talk about. And we walked through the third floor of the museum and we saw this piece and we were immediately drawn to it. And we thought like, what better piece to talk about? Like being um, like daughters of Mex Mexican immigrants, like what better piece to have a discussion about, so. Yeah, and so we really were excited to be able to just look at the whole piece together, talk yeah. about it, and we want to share a little bit of what we found and why it's so significant for us. 
And so that kind of just brings us into really paying close attention to the imagery that is within the artwork. And so in the activity, I told you to really take time to look through the entire painting. And I know when we were in here, the first thing that really like popped to mm -hmm. us, like where we're like, Definitely. oh wow, is in the background, the very, very background, we see the church. Now, <laughs> as Lorena mentioned, uh, we come from, you know, that Latino culture, like that background. And I remember Sunday mornings, you know, right away, my mom would come in and she'd be like, okay, arreglate, it's time, vamos a ir a la iglesia, which means, all right, get ready, we're going to church. Yes. And it's, it was always these really early masses we would go to, but it was like, sometimes it wasn't optional. <laughs> you just had to do it. It was never optional, let's be real. It was never optional. <laughs> but it was just a day where we were able to go as a family and do something yeah. together. And it was always like a nice way to start the week as well. We would go out and do things together and Definitely. You know, kind of just catch up. It was like a day for just family. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and so that was one big thing that just like, resonated with yes us. it immediately sparked that conversation and mm -hmm. then another component of this piece that we just connected with a lot was this um this woman who's like kneeling and she's kneeling in front of this church um and just the significance of of this like her in this very reverent position and yeah mm -hmm. yeah and so I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because um there were some things throughout the whole painting that really yeah. brought it back to that maybe that message that narcissa was trying to convey in this piece and so you can do this as well if you have a chance in the chat share with us maybe a few words that you noticed throughout the piece Definitely. we'll give you a second to mm -hmm. do that and then we'll talk more about that and just to kind of finish up another reason why we picked this too was just because um, we have family who are currently working um, as, you know, in the fields and um, they're essential workers. Like we had that big conversation about how they're, like if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have the produce that we have at home, yeah. right? And sometimes they're not really thought of. And so we really wanted to bring that back to the surface and have that conversation of, he is telling a story of the people who are out mm -hmm. there currently working out in the fields. And we started having that conversation of just her clothing itself, like the layers of clothing mm. that she has on. Did you wanna share a little bit more about why they dress like that? Yeah, so a lot of um, like farm workers dress in this way to protect themselves from the elements. And so even if it's hot, they might be wearing long sleeves, they might be covering their faces, they're trying to protect themselves from the sun. Um, mm. And yeah, I, I think that's just like traditional, traditional clothing is actually, no matter the temperature, being yeah. like very wrapped up, being very covered. Very, very good. And so uh, Narciso, when he came to the United States, he started off as a farm worker. Yes. And mm -hmm. so that really hit home to him as in like, I want to tell the story of the people because not only is it just because I have a family member, like we have family members who are doing that. His was more like, I did it myself. You know, I was out in the fields. I knew what it was like to be in those harsh conditions and just working, you know, and that influenced him to just move on and portray them in his artwork. And so let's Definitely. go back to that question we asked about what were some words you might've seen throughout this piece. And um, one big one we yes. saw was Altar or altar. Um, uh, Crystal and I talked about how when we first saw it, we um, pronounced it in Spanish, and we you see this word like reoccurring throughout this painting, and um, we also thought it tied into this like theme or this experience of like um, like going to church, of like reverence, of yeah. like offerings. Um, yeah. And so, Crystal, what what about you? What do you think about the word altar? Yeah, that was like the first thing I was like really thinking. It was like, oh, when you go, that's the first mm -hmm. thing you visually see when yes. you go into a church is that, you know, altar. And it's also an opportunity to like, you know, of giving. You can give offerings or you can pray upon the altar. And so in here, um, Narciso is being very intentional because uh, he's saying she could be at mass right now right she could be in the church but she's not she's working on a sunday morning and she is offering herself to just like 
she's doing her yeah, own kind her of job. offering yeah right and we talked about offering. that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i think that's like a great segue into another question that we had for you all is um the material that this um piece is painted on so the you see the altar reoccurring that like logo reoccurring on this box um but did you like what did you think crystal about the produce box that he used I am very happy that he did use it, you know, yeah. something different, a different surface, Definitely. and not just that, where it's like, it's on the produce box that she's like currently putting things inside the asparagus, mm -hmm. but then to have it also be the box that he's painting on just was like, wow, like he really wants us to understand that like he's making those connections. Yes. And I think this is a great opportunity too to um, kind of talk about the video that we're gonna play in a moment. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And that's gonna lead also to our next conversation after the video of the material alone, yes. what he's using. Mm -hmm. And so um, you can start thinking about it, what materials you think he's working with. And then when you're looking at the video, you can actually see him uh, in the process of creating and you can see all the different just how intentional he is with his process, definitely. Very good. All right, so we're gonna switch over to that video now. My motivation for representing farm workers is really to shine a light to the plight of farm workers. I feel like my experience uh, working in the fields for many years led me to a conclusion that it's really not fair the way they live, um, as opposed to how the ranch owners live. My name is Narciso Martinez and I'm an artist. Right now, I'm really into charcoal. I feel like charcoal um, aligns with the subject matter since it's very powdery, very dirty in a way. And, um, and I like to incorporate ink on it. And um, I use gouache, especially white wash. And, um, and for support, I use boxes, produce boxes. In undergrad, when I was in the fields, I was not really interested in the life of farmers because I was interested in making money for school. Because I was there, I was painting a lot of landscapes and trees and uh, flowers and stuff like that. But um, after I went to graduate pro program, I became more interested in the actual lives of the farm workers. And so I would go to their places where they live and I would uh, share stories with them and talk to them. Because when I was in undergrad, I wouldn't talk to them. I would just stick with my group and just go from one orchard to another. But this time I would just actually go and at lunchtime I would just join a group, a different group every time. And, and so, um, you know, and I managed to go to, a, to some of the uh, houses where the ranch owners lived. And, you know, it's just like, I was like, how is this fair? You know, like all these people live in these trailers, very, um, I don't know, unsanitary, unsafe. And of course, where the ranch owners live, it's like they have all these um, two, three story houses in the middle of the orchards. And uh, they have all these nice cars parked outside. I mean, it's just like, I thought I was, this is crazy. I wanna, I wanna show this in my art. But uh, of course it was a struggle. And when I started doing the drawings on the, on the, on the produce cover boxes, I think that kind of evolved to be more about the, farm workers versus the agri agricultural industry because I feel like everything is connected. My name is Narciso Martinez and I'm an artist. So we just want to thank and credit Long Beach Post for that video. Um, it was just such a great look into Martinez's process. Crystal, did you have a favorite part of that video? Oh yeah, the whole thing. <laughs> no, it was a it was a really good video because it shows you like just 
start to finish yeah you know like even though it's not the entire thing it's mm -hmm. like a nice intro to like his studio space and him just getting really motivated um, and looking at references in his phone and I think one of my biggest things when we first saw that together was like wow like the scale of his artwork um, I love that like in this one we're looking at just like one box right one surface that it's a pretty big size piece in my opinion the one we're next to but when you look at him sitting in front of one of his original pieces it's like you can yeah. tell he uses multiple boxes so there goes that medium mm -hmm. you know the surface he uses you know those produce boxes throughout his entire um, kind of series or works that he's doing so I think just seeing the scale of his work is one part that I really enjoyed from the video. Definitely. And I don't know if we mentioned this um, in this gallery bite, but I think one part of his process that I just love is that he goes to grocery stores to collect these boxes. Um, yeah. So I think that like also shows just how resourceful he is and how much he reuses. I know my family is the same way, like, oh, don't throw that, don't throw yeah. that box out. Like, <laughs> exactly. keep everything. And yeah. Crystal's the same way with, like, um, art supplies. <laughs> I am very bad at that. <laughs> I tend to collect too much. But then it's, that's the word, you know, resourceful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I know from my background, like, my parents were very <clears throat> big about, like, Every little thing counts, right? Like any, you know, we pay for that. Esa comida is not, <laughs> you know, cheap. That food is not cheap, you know, that we go to the grocery store and we're spending, you know, yeah. a lot of money on this stuff. So it was just a way to teach us as well how to be very resourceful. And I love how he's Some, doing that too. Definitely. Yeah. I yeah. think my favorite part of the video is just like hearing his connection to the subject matter. And I feel like you get to really see his perspective and you can kind of guess right like when you're looking at this this piece you have an idea of like what this is about but to be able to connect it to someone's like lived experience is something that is like completely different um, yeah. so I really appreciated that part of the video mm -hmm. and I think we touched a little bit about this but to know that he himself was working there yeah you know and one thing that he really talks about in his work is that he has a very somber quality in his uh, artwork when he's working with the medium and he definitely says that he wants to capture like those harsh conditions like what it was like to be in that place um, and he definitely starts off first with just like a very simple sketch you know he captures the entire thing with just like oh uh, maybe in this piece for sure, the white charcoal. Mm -hmm. And then he moves in and starts using, you can see some of those ink strokes throughout, very horizontal lines throughout the entire canvas. Um, and then he goes in with ink also. Mm -hmm. You can, if you get really close into the artwork, and this might be an opportunity for you guys to come and see it in person, but just those little fine details Definitely. my goodness there's so many little lines um in the ruffles you can really see that he's trying to get all those little details in just the clothing mm -hmm. um, and everything else in the background is more i wouldn't say muted but very like very simple you yes. can tell his main subject here is who Mm -hmm. And kind of a little bit more information about the materials. As Crystal, Crystal mentioned, there's um, ink, gouache, charcoal. Because um, mainly those main mm -hmm. mediums he uses, specifically for this painting here. And he was so intentional with choosing those mediums because he felt that they best represented like the subject matter. So charcoal is a medium that's very, you get dirty. Um, yeah you know, it gets everywhere. It's not very easy to control at times. And so he felt like those mediums best reflected like his subject matter. Yeah. Um, also goes back to just like how intentional of an artist he is. Yeah, very, very intentional. Um, and then I don't think we touched too much about the surface alone. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when you come to a museum, yes. there are many paintings with these like very mm -hmm. lavished or very nice, huge frames around it. Yeah. And this one, doesn't. No frame. At all. Mm -hmm. He's just letting it be what it needs to be. Um, and so I think we have a question, right? Yes, Crystal, we do indeed. Um, Andrew Rogers asks in the chat, why can't you see the figure's face? Are they supposed to be anonymous? Mm. Great question, Andrew. That is a very, very great question. I think maybe for this piece, yeah. I've seen a couple of his works where he has shown mm -hmm. the subject's face. 
But also, I think when you're working, again, in an area like th they do, you know, the farm workers, it's like those conditions. I yes. know um, from experience, my uncle, he used to wear like bandanas throughout his entire face. You couldn't even see his eyes almost. And it was because of all that dust that yeah. just is always piling <clears throat> in your face. And he used to tell me all the time, like, yeah, the first thing I wanted to do when I got home was just like jump in the shower because I felt dirty. Um, and I think that's why for this piece, he's trying to yeah. be very symbolic that mm -hmm. that's mainly maybe the main reason why he's very, this person, you know. I wonder covered. too, yeah, I think there's like, um, like farm workers, right, are kind of like invisible workers. Um, mm -hmm in our society they're like essential workers but definitely workers that go unnoticed um good, yeah. and so i wonder if like covering her face is like kind of symbolic of that um yeah. of that and also i think like sometimes it's best for folks um who are doing this work to remain anonymous to like to not for names to, yeah. to like not be known right yeah. um for safety reasons very good and mm -hmm. i also think it's just the home like they're very humble I think yes. mm -hmm. um, it's not really a profession that people see some, like you said, you know, important sometimes. And I think for people who do this job, they're just very humble about it. Um, I definitely know like the people I know just, yeah, they're very reserved about it. They prefer just doing it and yeah, know, it's just, definitely. it's just mm -hmm. the way things are. Yeah. And so what we wanted to do, um, just to kind of get a good hold of this piece, is we're going to do a really quick uh, sketching activity with all of you today. Uh, so if you have a paper, a pencil, any kind of writing utensil, we're going to really, um, yes, we're going to take <laughs> this piece uh, and just take a moment to just sketch. So we're going to make it come back on the screen. I don't want you to worry too much about mistakes or anything you can kind of zoom into an area that you might really want to focus on for these next maybe two minutes um, it can be you know even just like a small snippet of her clothing or it can be the church in the background just take a moment for yourself sketch for a little bit it's going to be silent mm -hmm. and it's really just to put you know the what we're visually seeing you know from paper to pencil to paper <laughs> yeah and so, just to have a different way to interact with art today. there you go yeah. so we'll take a chance don't worry if you're not someone who likes to sketch just i know mine's going to be significantly worse than crystals oh my but that's goodness. all right <laughs> stick figures <laughs> okay go ahead we're gonna let you guys sketch for a few minutes So those maybe last little strokes. I like doing these activities because it also allows me to really look at how the artist can sometimes be so simple in some, mm, some of the mm -hmm. stuff it does. Like I try to do the church, 
Yeah. You might not be able to see it, but this is my church. <laughs> well, now I'm not going to show mine, Crystal. <laughs> so thanks. But no. just like to think that it's just these very simple lines, but mm -hmm. we can still tell what that image is, right? Yeah. yeah. I think it's like a really nice way to end the program because I told you I'm not showing. <laughs> she um, did really good. Uh, yeah. I think it's a really nice way to end the program because it kind of gives you a chance to continue to think about this piece, but also to take some time to like clear your mind a little yeah. bit. Um, and um, you're always welcome to go on our website, um, you know, Crocker Art Museum. Art Museum. <laughs> Is that the yes, um, and so you can go there and you can uh, go to our collections page and this piece is actually on there. So if you want to spend more time sketching the work, please uh, go online, check it Definitely. out. Or you can come in person. Yes, Gallery 308, as we mentioned earlier. Um, come through, check it out. It's definitely more impressive in person. Um, yes. And thank you so much for joining us today. We had a lot of fun um, hanging out with all of you. <laughs> all of you. Thank you, Crystal and Lorena. Um, Lorena, rest easy knowing that your drawing is a lot better than mine. Um, <laughs> and thank you all at home for uh, tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you again next time. Take care. Have a great afternoon. Bye.